So my name's Karen Samuelson, and I live in Arlington, Massachusetts with my husband and my 24-year-old son and my dog. And I'm an author. I'm a writer. I have written a couple of screenplays. I wrote a play that was um, stage produced by Arlington Friends of the Drama. And I recently, this past May, um, published a book called Weaving Dreams in Oaxaca. So the backstory to Weaving Dreams in Oaxaca, or at least some of the background, is when I was, I think, about 23, I spent a couple of months living in Guatemala and learning Spanish with a friend of mine. And then we spent two more months traveling through Central America into um, Colombia and Ecuador. And that sort of began my love with Latin America. So in 2005, we decided to go live in Oaxaca for about eight months. And we drove down, which was uh, a challenge. It took 10 days. And we had, Nick was about six then, and we had a big 65 pound lab in our Honda Odyssey. And we stopped in different places, and we were in New Orleans just like two days before Katrina. Um, and we kind of escaped the city just in time. And Nick ended up, I think he was in first grade at the time, so he went to school in Oaxaca. We enrolled him in a school, we found housing. So we couldn't find a bilingual school. So he was promised that some kids would help him that spoke English, but they didn't so much. So at first he had a hard time, and then he became very good friends. And here he is with his friends really hugging him in like this beautiful embrace. And he learned playground Spanish very well. Um, and he, we even had his friends sleep over a couple of nights, and it was, it was a wonderful experience. That was in 2005. And, um, at the time, my mom was, I think, 86 and could no longer read because of diabetic retinopathy. She couldn't see well enough. So every two weeks, I would send her back tapes um, that I would talk about the church we were in or the street we were on or the marimba band we were listening to. And so every two weeks, she got these really fun tapes to listen to. And when I came home and decided to write this book, I transcribed the tapes. And it was about 23 pages of very detailed description. And it really helped me um, with, the, with being able to describe Oaxaca in the most colorful terms, because it is a wonderful, amazing, vibrant city. Weaving Dreams in Oaxaca, um, as I said, was kind of inspired by living there. And there's three main characters. One is a professional dancer in New York City, and she's struggling with, should she keep dancing, or, you know, staying on the stage as a professional, or is it time for her to, she's thinking about motherhood, is it time for her to quit that position and figure out how she's gonna get family in her life? And she's had some past issues in relationships, so she decides to take a leave from the dance troupe and goes to Oaxaca to figure things out. Um, and she has some regrets, but I don't want to spoil the book. Um, and another character ends up in Oaxaca. He's a professor of um, Colombian art and architecture. And so he, he's visited Tikal in Guatemala, and he's coming to Oaxaca to solve, kind of unravel a family um, mystery. And he ends up uh, connecting quite closely with a an older woman who's a curandera. She uh, cures with herbs and in natural, natural methods. It's very common in Oaxaca. And then there's a third character, Enrique, who is, um, he's a DJ and he's a mechanic. And he is a gay man who is having a hard time coming out because his father is homophobic and he's very, he's an evangelical. So the three cross paths and as, uh, Frankie, the, the dancer, is trying to figure out her issues. She also becomes friends with Mac and ends up being his interpreter as he explores um, this pueblo in Oaxaca where he, he becomes close with this curandera. And he also has a need to go to Mexico City. There were some themes that I naturally ended up incorporating into the novel, I think partly from my own life. I had struggled with, you know, how to become a mother, how to involve motherhood in my life. And I w wasn't a mother until my mid 40s. And um, the idea of adoption, our son is adopted, that, that has a place, a very strong place in the book. Um, and uh, my oldest brother was gay and I 
experienced his struggles coming out and his successes coming out. I self-published it. And in doing in that process, I reconnected with some women writer friends of mine. And that's been really wonderful. Um, they've been very helpful. They are, you know, published author, authors themselves. And also I'm part of a group called Kitchen Table Writers, and that was very supportive. I'm really happy that with my book, Weaving Dreams in Oaxaca, that um, the Book Rack in Arlington Center carries it, Porter Square Books carries it. I have some things that we brought back that are really indicative of how magical and uh, full of art and life and light Oaxaca is. So here's a sun that is, you know, made of clay. It's something that, you know, we had up in our dining room for years. It's kept everybody smiling. Um, here's a kind of a vase that is, has little beautiful flowers, you know, very intricate clay flowers on it. Um, and then here's a frame, which, and it has um, paintings of alebrijes, which are the, you know, the fanciful animals I told you about. I think these are all bunnies. And so I put a mirror in it when I came home. Um, and then here, here's, here's another alebrije I really like, the cat, because you can stick it on a counter. Um, and then this is a, like a, just a very typical terracotta um, container, and you can put anything in it. I often put dried flowers in it, um, which it's just quite beautiful. And, I, and also this is a, a wee peel or a covering from the Huchitan area. This is from the um, Zapotec culture. And these are things uh, like Frida Kahlo took this on. Her mom was Zapotec. So this is something that she wore and she made kind of famous in her paintings. But of course, it's famous on the isthmus. The women wear these um, for special occasions. Um, and sometimes just if they feel like it. And the mouches often, the two-spirited people, will often wear um, one of these beautiful, beautiful tops that's got gorgeous embroidery in it. And the colors are just sort of the colors of Oaxaca.